All right, so I'm excited to chat with Reed Davis about functional lab testing and why we should go beyond the blood test. So Reed is a board certified holistic health practitioner and certified nutritional therapist. He is an expert in functional lab testing and holistic lifestyle medicine. Reed is the founder of Functional Diagnostic Nutrition and the FDN certification course with over 4,000 graduates in 50 countries. Reed served as the, as the health director at a wellness center in Southern California for over 10 years. And with over 10,000 clients, he is known as one of the most experienced clinicians in his field. Reed serves on the advisory board of the American Natural Wellness Coaches Board and the American Association of Natural Wellness Coaches. And thank you so much for joining us, Reed. Hey, thanks, Dr. Eric. Real pleasure to be here with you and your audience. Uh, hope we can help them out a little bit with something. Yeah, I'm sure we will. And so let's, uh, why don't we dive a little bit into your background? How did you, you know, develop the, you know, um, FDN program, the FDN certification course? Yeah, sure. So I worked in a clinic for 10 years, as you mentioned in the brief bio, and uh, my job there was to look at lab work on people and uh, figure out what's really wrong with them. And um, I kind of, that's why I started working there. I actually had been in environmental law, saving the whole planet. And I, I decided to work with people. I just said, hey, the planet's getting worse and worse and saving the planet's great. Air, birds, water, trees, bees. But what about people, including me? You know, I was getting older and I thought, you know, I've, I'm perfectly healthy. I've never really been to a doctor, but except for sports injuries. But but what about people and what about me? I don't want something sneaking up on me. And when I went there, I'm sure your listeners would identify with this. I started Tria, you know, everyone that came in the door, I started interviewing them. And it was amazing the number of people who had uh, been to several practitioners and weren't better yet. And I thought to myself, wow, what a ripoff. <laughs> like, what do you mean you've been to eight people, 10 people, more, and spent a lot of money trying to figure out what's really wrong? And they've usually been, some doctors had told them there's nothing wrong with you. You're, everything looks normal on your lab work, which I questioned. But um, it was really remarkable how they were all with different health problems caught in a cycle of trial and error. It wasn't one demographic. I mean, most were in pain. Um, and and then you find out, well, what else is going on? And they got hormone problems and their immune system shot. And their digestion isn't working and their um, detoxification systems aren't working and, and on and on. So, um, you know, again, I came from another field. I didn't have medical training. One uh, moment. And I had a lot to learn but I had nothing to unlearn. You know, I hadn't, I was, had a very open mind to, um, to what was going on, you know, what, what was really going on, if I could figure it out. So I started running Something lab work. Please try again. <laughs> I started running lab work and by the thousands, you know, like I, over 10 years, I ran thousands of labs on thousands of people. And I had great mentorship from the labs and from some doctors. But I also made my own observations. And so that's what started FD. And that's that's it, it just grew out of that practice. I um, developed a system of investigation, uh, looking for causal factors upstream. And I never wanted to diagnose or treat anything. Wasn't licensed to do that. Had no interest in that because people already were doing that, you know. Um, again, they, they uh, I, I thought they'd been getting kind of ripped off. Um, I also wondered why they were putting their health in someone else's hands instead of taking charge themselves, you know, as I had always tried to do for myself. Uh, again, I hadn't been to a doctor, everything chronic or downward spiraling or, you know, degenerative or anything like that, just some injuries. So I didn't know what this, the health system was like. I, I found out through these poor people. And one day I was just out riding my motorcycle and, and, uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to be the last damn person that these people need to see, which is naive. And I, again, I had a lot to learn, but nothing to unlearn. 
I was just open to the data and I, I became an expert in the data that you can collect from these alternative labs, saliva, urine, blood stool, not your CBC and Kim panel that physicians say, oh, nothing's wrong with you. Well, people know something's wrong. So they go down the street to another practice and they tr try a bunch of stuff. Some of it might be helpful. Some of it's not helpful at all. Again, just kind of uh, that ripoff thing. <laughs> And uh, so 10 years later, I find myself teaching the system I created, the system of investigation into the healing causal factors, the healing opportunities. And then, of course, our protocols, which are known uh, around the world now, the DRESS, D-R-E-S-S -S protocol, diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation, well known and practiced. And uh, you, you fired one of our graduates. So. Uh, you know what it's all about. Yeah, and and speaking of acronyms, can you jump into the hidden stressors? You know, I, I did my research as I usually do when, before you know these interviews, and I I've, I've watched your videos talking about the you know the the, the acronym yeah. hidden. And so yeah, if you could talk about that. Yeah, well, I again I started um, mostly just testing women's hormones because one of the ways I promoted the business. Again, I was, I was in a wellness center and uh, there's some practitioners in there. And I was really the lead marketer in the beginning before I became practitioner. I went to school. I did the uh, nutrition classes and the, all the other things I did. But um, so I was out there getting uh, business through bone density testing. I would go out in the world, you know, different locations. I had a whole route and every couple of months I'd be back to that location and so bones and hormones really important right and as uh, so i tested hundreds and hundreds of women in the beginning just for hormones only and i could see where you know I, I could help them and do some balancing i wasn't ever prescribing but but hey you got to balance your hormones you got to reduce stress here we, and then guess what i i ended up having to test them for other things their digestion they, they really were eating well a lot of them but had poor digestion and and on and on. So I came up finally with this. It took me a while, but H I D D E N: hormones, immune system, digestion, detoxification, energy production, and nervous system. And there's a way to assess each one of those areas in a person. And when you do, you're going to find healing opportunities, things that need to be fixed, so to say, speak, and things they can do themselves to do the fixing. So the H-I-D-D-E-N, a lot of people aren't even looking for these in these areas in the same way that, that I or any of my practitioners would do. Again, not wanting to diagnose and treat anything specifically, but looking for the hidden imbalances and uh, dysfunction. And a lot of it's really far upstream. It's kind of hard to find some of it, but we figured out a way. And now we do the hidden stressors and dysfunctions on every person doesn't matter what your really main complaint is these are the areas that have to be looked into to correct chronic stress related downward spiraling conditions which is what people suffer from today everything from hashimoto's to irritable bowel to uh, foggy thinking you know just chronic fatigue whatever you know so so it's it's really remarkable that assessment and the number of opportunities for healing you will find in those areas. Again, I, I call it the entire constellation of healing opportunities. And it just works. When, when you look there and you explain it to a person, teach them, uh, then guess what? They're going to understand. They're going to really appreciate the, the, the information. It's, it's really intelligence gathering. And then they're much more likely to follow your recommendations for, again, the lifestyle medicine. Yeah, definitely agree. You know, I, I like testing, trying to find the answers. Uh, what are some of the concerns with just addressing symptoms? Like if someone, you know, is having digestive symptoms, or, you know, instead of doing a, a, a test, just, you know, taking some supplements to try, you know, assuming they have parasites or assuming they have SIBO, or same thing with adrenals. Some people might say, well, I know I'm stressed out, so why should I do testing? Right. What yeah. are some of the concerns with taking that approach of you know, not doing the testing and just jumping into the treatment? 
Yeah, the, the main concern is that you're not really addressing the causal factors and your problem is just going to get worse. And so, you know, I, I need to back up a bit and say, hey, there's nothing wrong with getting relief care. If you've got migraines or if you've got uh, debilitating hot flashes and night sweats and and all this stuff, there's nothing wrong with getting some relief. That's And doctors are great at that. They've got all kinds of lotions, potions, powders and pills and so do alternative practitioners. They're, they're really big on their uh, supplements and modalities and, and things that will get you out of pain and uh, suffering. So that's okay. But if you only address that level, then you're not working at the causal level. And um, so we look upstream. And, and you know, I pretty much have given up on this term root cause. So having said that, oh, you look for the root cause. Yeah, we look, but you can't. There isn't enough tests. There certainly is no one test, um, but there's enough tests out there that you can get close enough to the root cause to have an effect on it. And especially when you use the multiple causal factor, uh, those that constellation of healing opportunities. And, and realize this, causal factors, no matter how far upstream they are, no matter how hard they are to find, um, are also having an effect upon each other. And a lot of that's not singly measurable. So you've got, again, hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, nervous system imbalances, all these uh, uh, causal factors having an, and having an effect upon each other. So how are you going to figure out the one that really is causing, let's say, uh, thyroiditis or something? You know, how, it's it's almost impossible and that's why i call it metabolic chaos i gave up root cause uh, root a root cause you know we look and then what we find is metabolic chaos so let's just call it that <laughs> and then so and, and the only way to uh, really fix things um is to treat every cell tissue organ and system at once you know every have do something that person has to to live, you know, again, lifestyle medicine is about living yourself out of the problems you lived yourself into. So, so you, you know, it's it's really a non-specific treatment, but it works on every cell, tissue, and organ there is. So, it's a very interesting non-medical way for people to handle their problems. So, um, I would start with that you know, why don't we treat just the symptoms? It's okay to treat the symptoms, but if you stop there, you're probably going to need more of the same medicine. <laughs> so it, it, like thyroid is a good example. I know you're an authority on that. Um, you deal mostly with the hyper thyroid, which is a more difficult and often autoimmune condition. And, and there's a lot of factors going on, but the, um, the typical, mo the more common thyroid problem is just hypothyroidism. And it's really kind of a, uh, there might be absolutely nothing wrong with the thyroid. But if you go in for, for um, uh, with a certain set of complaints, by the way, this is where I like to explain the, the sounds like method. You know, you, you named it um, the sounds like method. You, you mentioned this approach anyway. So you go into a practitioner and you go, hey, you know, I'm tired, fatigued, I'm a little overweight, I can't seem to lose it. Um, sometimes I'm sad. I've got constipation. I'm constipated and my extremities are often cold or even numb and my hair is thinning. Well, that sounds like thyroid. So the typical practitioner would check the thyroid and go, yep. I always tell them, don't break your wrist, you know, patting yourself on the back real hard because all you found was one thing that's hypoactive it, it's not producing enough of the right thyroid hormone um, and you can replace that that's going to get that person some symptom relief they may have you know just uh, a little less hair thinning or cold or numb extremities and constipation along with some other it might might clear up a little bit and but it really isn't addressing why the thyroid is underactive which Dr. Eric, I, I hope you'll agree with me, is very often a natural adaptive response to stress. So if you're under a lot of stress from a lot of different angles, 
mental, emotional, physical aches and pains, chemical, biochemical stressors. There's lots of different types of stress out there that would put you into kind of hibernation. Your body's going to go, whoa, hey, we better not use up all our resources. So let's slow metabolism down. And so the hypo thyroid is an adaptive in some cases, in many cases. I'd even mention to say most of the cases that we've seen where there actually is, you know, less thyroid hormone. Do you really just want to replace it or do you want to find out why? What are all the stressors involved and that is causing your body to shut down like that? And so, again, I, I hope you agree. Yeah, no, I definitely agree that that stress is a big factor. And then you mentioned digestion and, you know, most of these conditions, both hypo and hyperthyroidism, most of them are autoimmune and most of the immune system cells are in the gut. So you need to have a healthy gut, healthy digestion in order to have a healthy immune system. So I agree, it would be crazy to do what most medical doctors do, <laughs> just give thyroid hormone replacements if the thyroid hormone is low. And you know, similar with, with hyperthyroidism, with Graves or even non-autoimmune hyperthyroidism, just to say, okay, let's give you anti-thyroid medication, which blocks the thyroid hormone. You know, you want to find out the underlying cause, whether, you know, it's stress, which like you said, is a big factor or, you know, some of the other, you know, factors, other imbalances that you mentioned, you know, imbalances yeah. in your nervous system and, you know, the, the, yeah. So again, there's a, there's a lot of different things um, to consider. And unfortunately most conventional medicine ignores that and just, um, yeah, just puts a bandaid on, on the problem pretty much. I, I knew we were like minded enough because uh, you, you, you had me on the show. You got me on here. So um, we're probably very much like-minded in, in our approaches too, you know, but my, mine is not a medical approach. You, you being licensed have other options uh, that I, I don't have and never had. So working in the office there, uh, how are you going to, you can't write a prescription. So and the labs that the physicians had already run on these people weren't revealing much data that was useful. And so that's why we got into the alternative labs, the saliva, the urine, the stool, dried urine, finger stick tests for this and that, and uh, even hair tissue. I don't have much hair to get any samples from, but but you know, I uh like use your goat your go goatee hair, you could use that. Yeah, you, you can do facial um hair is okay because it it's gonna tell you something it and, and each one of these types of testing gives us a data point and then our job isn't to diagnose or go oh let's change the numbers on the paper it's get the person to do something that changes the number. numbers on the paper aren't the problem they're the result of the problem. Same thing with symptoms, which I don't know if I finished, or, you know, we fully discussed that chasing symptoms. Um, again, it's never bad to try to get out of pain. I totally understand. Um, and your other things that are going on, but you can't stop there. The, the, the thyroid was a good example of why we don't stop there. Um, the reason we don't chase symptoms because we know they're, they're the result of the real problem just like the lab work look i'm a guy that teaches a course in lab work yet i'm saying that lab work th those numbers aren't the problem they're just a result of your genetics and how you've lived the the signals going to the genes uh which is called epigenetics and that, that's really where uh, our program lies that the dress program d-r-e-s-s -E uh is an epigenetic program it's a lifestyle and environment based program. Yeah. So I like to discuss some of the different tests that you commonly recommend. So like, for example, with adrenals, do you, uh, you mentioned saliva testing. So is that what you use uh, to, to evaluate adrenals or do you like dried urine yeah. testing? Cause now there's the Dutch test. Uh, there, there's all kinds of tests. E e the adrenal part of the Dutch test is saliva. So it's a combination. Um, they, the uh, the urine part of that test is more about the, the sex hormones or their metabolites. And so that's a good test. Uh, the one we're using uh, has been specially developed for us now that we've been doing this 23 years. And I have 
a lot of students and a lot of graduates doing it. So I kind of have some some uh, ability to maneuver in in the lab space. I know a lot about labs, um, and uh, we're using the circadian rhythm along with the uh, cortisol to DHA ratio and the sex hormones. And we've added to that saliva test melatonin because that's uh, a finger pointing at some healing opportunities, especially if it's low when it should be high or if it's high when it's supposed to be low. Um, it's really important. And also secretory IgA. So we get a window into the immune system all from a saliva test. So it's the cortisol and DHEA, which are, are your catabolic and your anabolic hormones. You want to have balance. You don't want to be too catabolic. You don't want to be too anabolic. They need to be in balance, cortisol and DHEA. The, so the same test also gives us cortisol morning, noon, and afternoon, and nighttime. So we can check out the circadian rhythm. We see a lot of uh, roller coaster. And it explains why people feel like they're on a roller coaster. Their hormones are following right along with, with that. Um, and... Um, Again, we always look at the sex hormones, same thing. These are the bioavailable levels. This is why I like the uh, saliva. There's only very small amounts of hormones in your saliva. So it has to be a really, really good test. Um, these tests are very advanced now after decades and decades of working, try, trying, to, trying to get accuracy, specificity and sensitivity is, is critical. So you don't have a lot of hormones in your saliva, but it, what shows up is the bioavailable levels. Those are the levels that are actually working for you in your body. Through urine, you're looking at metabolites, and it may not be exactly 100% um, representative, or, or you know, it's 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 a good guesstimate, I guess. Um, but but it's not the bioavailable level. It's gone through all those metabolic processes um, and being excreted in the urine. So anyway, so so it's also very time specific. You can't get time specificity with urine. It's an average of the last several hours. So we want to know, well, what is my cortisol in the morning? What is it four hours later at noon, then afternoon, then nighttime or middle of the night? Uh, with So it's really important to have time specificity. Um, the, the, again, the sensitivity and, and uh, specificity of these tests are proven to be very, very high. There's over 300 white papers written on saliva testing now. When I first started, there was only a couple um, that we could refer to. It was considered kind of uh, alternative quackery, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. You know, but anyway, it's come a long ways. And it, with the melatonin, adding that at noon, melatonin should be very low at noon. It's the middle of the day. Why would you have high melatonin? Only if something's wrong would you have high, and we could sort of explore that and then secretory IgA is a main indicator of how well your immune system is it should be hovering secretory IgA is the main component of the uh, mucosal barrier in the gut that protects you from everything so in and the gut is most of your, your immune system so secretory IgA is huge and it should be hovering all the time, just waiting for anything bad to come along that it can, uh, you know, kill or or at least sequester and, and help be excreted from the body. You don't want that stuff getting inside you. So you have this mucosal barrier. Full, and that's on the same test. So with one morning um, sample saliva, you get that CIGA, you get the melatonin at noon, you get the circadian rhythm throughout the day, you get the sex hormones, including progesterone and estrogen and testosterone, the main ones. You can look at others if you want to. We don't bother much with some of the metabolites. But but um, anyway, that's a hell of a test. Great place to start. You can see how stressed out someone is, whether they're catabolic or too anabolic. That could be. Um, just It's just a way the body adapts. Um, and you could do a lot with that data to correct someone's behavior first of all just show them and and oh by the way if they went to a physician we're told nothing's wrong with you you can look at the this test results and go wow look at look at all this stuff that's off a little bit that you can improve versus nothing's wrong with you 
Do you recommend for cycling women? I know sal some saliva panels. I'm not sure if the one you're mentioning does this, but some of them have like a cycling panel, like where you could collect samples, like women who are cycling can collect samples every few days of their cycle. This way they're not just looking at a single sample. Of course, yeah. Like, in, in certain cases, you like fertility cases, um, or if people, uh, women are having uh, extreme difficulty as they cycle with, you know, headaches or pain or, you know, cramping, you know, all, the, all these, all these sort of um, symptoms that occur on a cyclical basis. Yeah, you could map out the entire cycle. Uh, you'd have to take a s saliva sample um, every, you, you could do it every other day, you could do it every three days, it just depends on you know, sometimes it's just a matter of convenience and expense that you would do a little less testing. But, you, you know, we we have panels that cover the entire cycle. And it's really interesting to to look at the numbers and go, wow, look, you're not even ovulating. Find 35 year olds that are under so much stress. They're not even ovulating. You could just tell by the, the hormones like nothing's happening here. Um, you don't have enough estrogen to ripen an egg to be released uh and and then the progesterone may or may not be kicking in at the right time so um it, it's very interesting to map out cycles otherwise with with postmenopausal we just uh you can take it any day just take the t just one time is all, you know all we need and for um the stress part of that uh for you know women who are still cycling we would just do it in the mid cycle that way we get a window into whether your estrogen and progesterone are at the right levels at that time when they should be the highest. So there's then, a matter of timing with some of these saliva tests, which is another indicator that you're getting real usable um, information because, um, you know, it's very time specific and time of the month specific. I mean, how much better can you get? That is true. That that it that is very true, and um, yeah, and you could obviously collect the saliva sample on every day. You know, like any day, the convenience of your home. You don't have to worry about going to to a lab. And sometimes the timing, timing the lab on you know during a certain day of your cycle. You know, if you were going to do it through a blood test, but you know, again, much more convenience, uh, much more convenient doing doing it through saliva. And you mentioned, so I'm glad you mentioned secretory IgA. Uh, cause I, I do like that marker too. And, you know, so that part of your, the hidden acronym, the I stands for immune. Are there other markers besides the secretory IgA that you look, look at, or is that the main one when it comes to the immune system? It's, it's the main one, but we're looking at other markers that can indicate, uh, there's issues going on. Obviously the stool testing for pathogens and uh, uh, microbiome imbalances and things like that. Your microbiome is also a part of your immune system. You know, it defends the, the good bacteria versus bad bacteria. So it's there for a reason. And that can get way out of balance. So I think that's one of the other main areas I would look to um, would be the microbiome. And is it uh, very diverse? You want a very diverse Talk about diversity. <laughs> you want it in your gut. You got to eat lots of different foods. You know, some people, Dr. Eric, they only eat 10 different foods. They don't eat it. And, and their microbiome gets uh, <clears throat> overpopulated with, with their commensal. They're, they're not unfriendly, but there's just not enough diversity there. And that's a big part of the immune system. Um, and then, you know, physicians uh, run tests too, uh, immunoglobulins and things. So, there's there's other tests that we would look at. You can look at the secretory IgA. Um, you can look at uh, IgM, IgE, IgD. Others, you know, there's there's lots of immunoglobulin. That you, and then overall, uh, immunoglobulin is a good test. You can look at uh, white blood cells and things. So there's there's other tests, but for your standard FDN practitioner. They're going to use secretory IgA, should be hovering, shouldn't be too high. If it's too high, you probably have some infection or acute. If it's too low, maybe you had the infection so long, 
you you stop producing you you end up with this chronicity of low sig a especially in with stressed out people everyone kind of knows that if you're all stressed out you're more likely to catch even just a common cold or something you know it's like when you get stressed out is when you get sick right well it's because your immune system goes down so what comprehensive stool testing do you recommend for everyone like let's say like everyone with at least with a chronic health condition you know everyone with hashimoto's graves you know like do you at least teach the fdns where they should order a comprehensive stool test for everyone or does it depend on the person we automatically run them on every every client because every client has something usually that's healable or or needs balancing in that area so um you know we we i got tired of doing piecemeal testing 20 years ago you know i, I was running as i said uh, first thing was i brought a lot of new patients in the office by going out into the community i was lecturing i was doing uh, bone density testing all over the place I had a portable dexa machine and um and i started kind of if you want to say it selling hormone test kits because women with bone problems need to check their hormones but it led into this whole system and otherwise when i had a client in the beginning i would start with the stress and hormone panel that we just talked a lot about and another one called the a metabolic uh, wellness panel um, that looked at digestion and detoxification and oxidative stress and um those two were kind of foundational. Uh, and then, so I'd run those and then I'd say, well, you know, we need to check for uh, mucosal barrier or um, pathology, bug test and food sensitivities. And sometimes it would stretch a person out for two or three months, you know, by the time you got all the labs done, maybe even longer. And I finally just had clients going, why did you run all these? Why didn't you just run all these tests at once? You know, I feel like I've been kind of, you could have fixed me a long time ago. If not that I'm doing any of the fixing, but you get what I'm saying. Um, if we did, so I just made that my policy. Look, we're just going to, because everyone needs to do it. I mean, you, you're just going to see this downward spiral is very observable by going through the labs. You could see this downward spiral. And so you might as well just do them all up front. And that's now my policy. And that's what I teach in my course. You don't have to, but it's the best way. And what is the metabolic wellness panel? So right now, now this is another thing that we've, we've uh, over the years had to work with labs to change. I mean, labs come and go uh, in and out of business. They, they, they change operations. They, they change scientists science itself changes you know so so we've now got our metabolic wellness panel it's a dried urine which is very convenient um we can ship that all over the world and you know send out kits you you click urine and you put it on these uh, blotters and let them dry and then you can send them in and it's cheap and so right now we're looking at uh indican which you know is an old test for dysbiosis and leaky gut and uh by the way it tells you that you're not breaking down protein very well and if you're not breaking down protein very well because you don't have enough good the good bacteria that breaks it down remember remember all this bacteria has it's not just sitting there for no reason it's it's part of your immune system it's part of the digestive processes and on and on um and so if you don't that's indicant so measures bacterial breakdown of protein um, if you, if it isn't working very well, you, you're, you're in a dysbiotic condition. You don't have enough of the good versus bad. So you're already dysbiotic. Um, that could, depending on one's presentation or symptoms, uh, it could just right there point the finger at leaky gut. We'd, we'd want to test further, but um, there's that. And if you're not breaking down your proteins, guess what? Amino acids are really important. You know, that's what protein in a sense is amino acids and they break down into neurotransmitters we find people with all kinds of mood disorders and they're just simply not digesting food very well it's amazing how much food dictates uh, health and all kinds of things people present with if you're malnourished because you have dysbiosis um you can fix that easily take total control over that 
So indicant is one marker on the metabolic wellness panel. Another is oxidative stress. Right now we're using the uh, 8-OHTG, 8-hydroxydeoxyguanosine. So that's a great measurement for uh, breakdown of material inside cells. It's simply, you know, there's always oxidative balance. You have pro-oxidation, anti-oxidation. And inside a cell, it's very important to have good balance there. And uh, if you're over... Uh, oxidative, you have too much oxidative stress, your cells won't even work right. And they won't, they can't respirate properly and they can't do the job. The DNA can get damaged and that can lead to real serious problems, mutations, even things like cancer, you know. So, so uh, one test, simple urine, you're looking at oxidative stress. By the way, we're kind of, we used to do lipid peroxides. I can talk about oxidative stress on the membrane of the cells as well as everything else. And another marker on that test is urinary bile acids because they indicate congestion of the liver. So, you know, physicians look at liver too. They'll look at um, certain markers that they would observe if they were elevated for a few months. And then if, if it doesn't go, because it might go up and down, uh, they would check for disease. You got hepatitis or some disease. Well, our test is more sensitive. It's more subtle. It's much more of a uh, sort of an anti-aging, just um, detoxification marker. Your liver's not, let's say, filtering as well as it should. And so when it's like that, it's full of antigens and um, immune complexes and, and sort of dirt and weeds <laughs> uh, because of leaky gut and things like that. Um, it'll spill excessive uh, bile acids into the bloodstream, which can be picked up in the urine. You know, it's a, kidneys filtered out and excrete it in the urine. So bile acids in the urine, there's always a normal amount, but it shouldn't be a high amount. And if there is, we've seen liver detoxification programs do miracles for those people. So, you know, again, it's not diagnosing anything. It's saying, hey, look, your liver looks a little congested. Every one of your listeners probably, uh, uh, well, hopefully they're of an age that remembers bags inside vacuum cleaners. And so a lot of people don't today. But if you know when your vacuum isn't working well, you change the bag and it works like a brand new uh, vacuum cleaner. And that's kind of how uh, the liver is supposed to work, like a brand new filter. <coughs> so... Um, uh, and then, and then you said so. Food, food sensitivity testing. Um, what do you do? You use IgG food sensitivity testing. Excuse me a second. So we're using the mediator release test from Oxford Biomedical right now. Excuse me again. Um, something's in my throat. So the mediated release test is not IgE or ITG or anything, any other immunoglobulin. It's it's a measurement of the release of mediators. So it it's uh, coming um, white blood cells, basically leukocytes and granulocytes and prostaglandins and things. Um, are going to affect the actual, they, they create volumetric changes in the little blood vials, tiny little, um, from, from one blood draw, you can test it. Now it's going up to 176 foods. No one eats that many foods, but you know, it, it'll show up uh, whether you ate the food or not, that you're sensitive to it. So don't eat it. It's actually creating inflammation. So what's happening so so it's the oxford biomedical mediator release test or mrt and then you could follow a diet that's less inflammatory and people get better and i've seen that one test looking backwards i couldn't imagine not running that test on someone eric because miracles have occurred <clears throat> to the degree that those foods are contributing to metabolic chaos is the degree to which you're probably going to improve by getting rid of those foods. So for diet, you know, we use metabolic typing system, but we also do 
uh, food elimination and we test, we don't guess. Um, and you'd be amazed at what foods you might. Matter of fact, I have right here taped to my computer the little list. Uh, this is the short of foods that I'm sensitive to, and it's normally color coded. I just printed in black and white, but but it tells you um, it, it gives you a list of foods to avoid and food additives and and other things that are in your diet oral because it's an oral intolerance test actually, but it also gives you the good list. Out of 176 foods we're testing for now, uh, there's going to be a whole lot that you aren't reactive at all to. So that's your shopping list. So it gives, you know, instead of just telling people what not to eat, you're giving them a shopping list of things you can eat. Delicious, great food. Hey, have you tried this lately? No, don't eat that. You'd be amazed how many foods you can click that you never eat that are on the good food list. It's, it's remarkable. So my wife and I, we spend time every week uh, and during the week um, doing food preparation. We grow our own vegetables. We order our meats online and uh, we have other groceries and items uh, delivered. Um, but but uh, you can really get good at your food selection, especially when you've run the test. Again, I got my recent most recent little bad list right here um and and everyone needs it because if you have a health problem those foods could be contributing to it they they may not contribute that much in which case um that test didn't help you that much but again looking backwards i've had people just have miraculous um results so looking forward, can't tell who's going to help the most. Looking backwards, we would never have gotten anywhere close to the results we got without running that test. So that's another test that you recommend for everyone to get. Obviously, it's up to the person whether or not they want to get it, yeah. but that's no, something we, you would tell If everybody. they want to work with us, sorry to cut you off there, but um, no, this is our program. This is how it works. And if you're going to work with me, I'm going to need intelligence. I need to gather some intelligence on you. What do you, you want to tell me the same story you told the last practitioner who guessed at what your problem is? Oh, it sounds like this and maybe run one. No, we're going to run our five labs, the stress and hormone panel, saliva, the metabolic wellness panel. We just went over three markers on that. We're adding, we're going to add um, uric acid to that test. Then the, meta, the uh, mucosal barrier assessment, we look at zonulin, family of peptides, and also uh, histamine and diamine oxidase. And we get the histamine to diamine oxidase uh, ratio. That's very important. It tells us how uh, your gut, you know, it's, it's a measurement of gut health, really important one. Um, so that's three tests. And those three alone would tell you a lot, tell you a lot about a person. And it would give you all these healing opportunities. Their hormones are out of balance. Their immune system's over or underactive. Their digestion isn't working. Detoxification, oxidative stress. You got all these healing opportunities, areas to improve, but you're not done. So you, you want to do those so you have an assessment of a person. But you also want to look. You might as well just run the stool test for microbiome and pathology because it's involved. And there are some functional markers on that test as well. Um, and then the food sensitivities test. How, how could I not run that? I had a lady quickly, and if you listen to some of my uh, podcast recordings, I tell this story a lot because it's everyone identifies with this poor lady who's coming in the office, and she was getting chiropractic. She's on about her eighth visit, and you know I'm triaging. I'm, I'm walking her back to the to the office, and I say, "Hey, what's wrong?" She's obviously not herself. Oh, Reed, I'm so upset. Uh, so There's 40 pounds that I'm carrying around extra. I gained it in the last two years because I'm on medication for the hives. And I can't stop taking the medication. And uh, before I can get any words out, she, she was like, and you know, Reed, I went to the doctor just the other day for a checkup and I told him how frustrating this 40 pounds is. And according to her, the doctor said, well, you can be fat or you can have the hives take your pick. And she said, well, that's really depressing. And the physician said, well, I'll be happy to write your prescription for antidepressants if you want. And so 
I knew then why she looked so sad and she's kind of just staring at the ground. And, and I said, well, did you ever try to find out why you get the hives? <laughs> Seems a logical thing to me and you. And her head snapped around so hard, I thought she wouldn't need her chiropractic that day. You know, she, what? What do you mean? So moving forward, obviously ran a test or two, a couple of tests, um, got her off some foods she was sensitive to. And it only took 99 days, nine days to quit her medication. She didn't need it anymore because she found what was causing the hives. And, um, and within another couple of weeks, she was working out to a sweat taking hot showers, uh, things she hadn't done in two years, because even on the meds, she couldn't work out to sweat or take take hot showers. So you talk about life changing. A couple of weeks after that, she told me she already lost 13 pounds over 40. And, uh, you know, so, so that would never have happened without running a food sensitivity test. So I <laughs> made sure, make sure everyone, kids with ADD, I had a principal call me tracked me down through the mom and uh he said this kid is so different you know he was uh poking the other kids not paying attention failing by the way he's only nine years old and uh got him turned around model student smart kid back to where the teach the principal tracked me down and said what'd you put him on <laughs> so well we put him on a, a diet that works for him and a better sleep schedule and couple of things but but yeah there's no magic pill that was just doing the right testing and i can go on and on i got i got just countless stories like that so looking backwards that's looking backwards boy did it help can't imagine not running that test looking forward i can't really tell because i don't know you're going to have some sensitivities but to what degree are they creating that metabolic chaos or contributing to that metabolic chaos that is resulting in your specific uh, symptoms? I can't tell that. So we just run the test. Uh, do you know Elizabeth Yarnell? Yeah, the name's really familiar. Why, why do I know her? Yeah, she, she's also part of, of Mindshare. Uh, but... Oh. But she she uh, she's really big into the mediator release testing. And, you know, I interviewed her um, on my podcast last year and or actually it might have been 2021. But but either way, so I had her as part of my. Yeah. That, that, anyway, so she, she was part of my podcast and, you know, she's she's big into the mediator release testing. And I heard of it before I chatted with her, but she really convinced me to finally set up an account and start doing it. And, you know, honestly, I, I can't say I've been doing it regularly, but I interviewed her again recently because she's coming out with a new book. And uh, even though I interviewed her before you, your, your, your interview on the podcast will actually be coming out before hers. So um, people listening to this will, won't be able to listen to her second interview until after listening to yours. But um, point is between speaking with her, you know, a couple of times and then speaking with you and you know, I've had a few other practitioners who uh, I think Cynthia Thurlow, I think she does mediator release testing. I spoke with um, Dr. Anshul Gupta. I know he recommends. So, so again, there's yeah a lot, lot of lot more practitioners that I than I realized. You know, this time last year I was you know a little bit familiar with it, but now yeah, it makes me realize I probably should be recommending it. But the reason why I've been hesitant is just because I. You know, for years, uh, as you know, IgG testing is a lot more common and I just didn't find that to be as accurate. And, you know, so just I always question, I don't want to recommend a test just for the sake of recommending it. And, you know, but obviously I want to find answers. And so just by speaking with Elizabeth and now speaking with you and, uh, you know, chatting with a few other practitioners, you know, it's something I probably need to be a little bit more stern about as far as just saying, you know, this is really a test that's going to benefit you. Well, that may benefit you, you know, and we have to be realistic about that. You don't know the the degree to which these reactive foods are contributing to the chaos that's resulting in the symptoms. With IgG, I find it's less common to, to um, in other words, the IgG reactions just aren't as involved in the chaos that's producing the symptoms, not to the same degree as the MRT. 
and I've run them both, and I've run uh, them both on the same people. So over the years, um, especially with kids, sometimes you just want to remove every food that's possibly reactive in creating the symptoms because kids can't think, you know, they, they just don't have an experience. They got nothing to go on. They might think that uh, not paying attention and poking your friends and outbursts uh, and are normal, it, you know, and they don't know why you're yelling at them. You know, I'm sending them out in the hallway. I used to get sent out in the hallway a lot. I'm kind of proud of that now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the janitor would come along and say, what are you do doing out here again? <laughs> anyway, leave that for another conversation. But, but, yeah. um, but man, yeah, these, these food sensitivity tests, top of the line is the MRT. And I know Cynthia real well and Gupta real well. And um, I just looked up um, Yarnell and I do recognize her picture from Mindshare for sure. Yeah. So, so good people doing good work. That's what it's all about. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you shared a lot of great information. Um, anything else uh, that I, I want to respect your time, but is there anything else you'd like to share? Anything else I should you know, have I, asked you that, that I didn't ask you? I, I've always got time for you, Dr. Eric, but and and to help people. It's, it's what I do. I get up every day joyful because I do have a career like this and a and a job if you want is it means you know if you love your work it's it's not work um and that's kind of where i would end with i always like to say uh, the science is great gathering intelligence you know through lab work saliva urine blood stool hair whatever it is is all great and it, it can lead to magnificent miraculous outcomes for the people and that's who we're here for remember we want to put control back in the hands of the people and um and it starts with that getting up in the morning i think a, a lot of our job is to uncover uh obstacles to healing the body wants to be fully functional every cell knows its job you don't have to teach your cells that they're an adrenal cell or a brain cell or a muscle cell or a bone cell i mean they know what kind of cell they are and they know how to do their job reproduce all these things so um, our job is to uncover obstacles to that natural uh, state of being. Sometimes those obstacles, you don't find them on lab work. They're in the mind and emotions of the person. You know, so that's another big part of FDN is that we have a lot of, co we study coaching skills. We study uh, motivation and, um, and again, getting to, the obstacles, the healing that have nothing to do with their saliva, urine, or blood, or stool. You know, it's in their head. And so getting into people's heads is, is really important. So our system is uh, uh, fully, fully includes uh, stress reduction, the mental and emotional states of mind that people might be in. And that, so we're not psychologists. We're not diagnosing anything like psychiatrists. We're not providing any happy pills. Uh, although supplements are part of our program, they're, they're not, uh, we just don't call them happy pills. <laughs> so anyway, you get what I'm saying. And so that's where I start a lot of conversations and other podcasts I've been on. It's pretty much all we talked about was what's in their head and how do you separate these things out? So I'll just add that that's also a part of uh, healing is your state of mind, your, your attitude, if you will. Um, and figuring out why it is a bad attitude if you have one. All right. Yeah, I definitely agree with what you just said. And where can people find out more about you? Where can people learn? Yeah. About you? Well, well, you know, what I do as the founder of FDN is it's, it's called Functional Diagnostic Nutrition. And um, you can simply go to fdntraining.com slash save my thyroid in honor of this uh, podcast. So fdntraining.com slash save my thyroid is where I would go. All right. Well, thank you so much, Reed, for sharing your you know expertise, your knowledge with regards to lab testing and you know going beyond that. 
you know, I, I learned some things and I always love when I learn things from my guests and, you know, I'm sure the listeners will Thank learn you. a lot too. Thank you very much. I hope people get something out of it that's useful. And I'm glad you did, Dr. Eric. So thank you.